Hello all. Welcome to part 13 of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. In this video, we will learn about port forwarding as part of post exploitation. This video is part of the SMFE courseware, uh, which is the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. You can learn more about it by visiting securitytube.net slash HMFE. And uh, if you would like to get certified or have two questions which you'd like to post on the students forum, consider enrolling. Our certifications are currently being taken by students from over 30 plus countries around the world. And this video is released free of charge on Security Tube in line with our vision to provide free yet quality InfoSec education to one and all. Okay, so still we are in the phase of post exploitation. In the last video, we saw how to set up a pivot. In this video, we will talk about port forwarding. Now, how does port forwarding work? The whole idea is that the attacker wants to reach a specific port on server 2. Maybe there is an application like a web server he wants to interact with. However, as we saw in the previous video, server 2 is not directly accessible to the attacker. So he has to go ahead and access server 2 via server 1. So the way port forwarding would actually work is first the attacker would break into server 1 and get Metapreter shell access. Then he would set up a local listener on his computer, which would then talk to the Metapreter session running on server 1. And this Metapreter session would forward the port to server 2 as requested by this local listener. Right? So in a more real life scenario, let's say we wanted to reach port 80 on server 2, which is running an intranet uh, web server, then we would actually set up port forwarding via server 1 to reach that intranet application, which may contain important announcements about the company and a ton of other things, right? Okay, so let's look at our setup. This is server 1 just like in the previous uh, video which has two interfaces one of which is accessible to the attacker publicly and the other one is connected to the internal host and this is the internal host so what we'll do is let's set up a quick web server on it by using a tool called mini share so what this does is this sets up a web server on port 80 and shares these files through that web server. So this will simulate our intranet web server. Now the first thing we will do is exploit server 1 which if you remember is at IP address 1.100. So let's exploit that. Fantastic. Now, just like in the previous case, we will first set up routing. To do that, let's actually background this session for a minute. And then let's use the route command, if you remember. So we'll do a route add 10.10.10.10. Netmask is 255.255.255.0. And the metapreter session ID through which to route is 3. So there you go. I can quickly do a route print to verify the same. It looks perfectly fine, right? Now, what I'm going to do is first check that the remote machine has port 80 enabled, right? How do you do that? Well, we'll go ahead and use one of our auxiliary scanners, which we used in the previous video for port scanning the remote machine. Right set our host 192. Oh, sorry, this would be 10.10.10.20 and set ports is 80. 
let me run the scanner to verify the same and if you notice port 80 seems to be open fantastic now what I have to do is set up port forwarding on server 1 to be able to reach server 2 from the attacker machine so for that I again connect back to my metapreter session and use the port forward command now port forward you do not need to give it a local listen address if you don't well it's going to just listen on all addresses on the attacker machine the local port to listen on let's say is 25000 as shown in the slide which could be any arbitrary allowed port the remote port is 80 and the remote IP address is 10 10 10 20 and of course I forgot the add command right there you go and if you notice this has added a relay to listen from the attackers machine on port 25000 to the remote machine on port 80 right you can verify that by doing a quick list there you go now what we'll do is we'll use firefox on the attacker machine to access 10 10 10 120's web server so and if you remember from the slides what you would need to do is just point Firefox to the local address 127.0.0.1 on port 25000 and this should work so we have a local host 25000 and there you go right you have reached my mini shared server this is nothing but the server running on the company's internal network and if there was any worthwhile announcement you could see that here currently there isn't any uh, you can go back here type in this is company confidential for employees only right save it and now remotely the attacker would be able to figure out what is there in this intranet server look at various files and whatnot depending on what's been shared on the intranet server so what we basically did is we used Metasploit to first break into server 1 set up port forwarding to reach server 2 on a specific port application we want to interact with and then the attacker interacts with this application using a local listener now these are ways in which the attacker can break into an intranet server maybe a web server maybe the web application is vulnerable to things like SQL injection and whatnot and the attacker can get away with company records that's all for this video in which we learned port forwarding. This video is part of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. Check us out at securitytube.net/smfe. Thank you.